welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire with Chad Marks. Keeping it real, keeping it raw. Hit that subscribe button and share this video. Let other people know what's going on while we take you behind the scenes inside federal prisons. Some of you might know about solitary confinement. Some of you might know what happens to people when they're locked in these cells. But a lot of you don't know that some men spend 5, 10, 15 years in these cells. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about John Jack Powers. He's one of our homeboys. He's from Syracuse, New York. John went to federal prison for armed bank robbery. He was a pretty normal dude. Didn't have any issues. Mentally stable. Pretty good dude. He ended up in Fort Dix in New Jersey, and he escaped. He was on the run for about a week. He started smoking crack with some chicks. Ended up getting rearrested. And then he was sent to the ADX in Florence, Colorado. Yeah, ADX. That place where they kept John Gotti, the underground prison. The place where they put people like Pistol Pete. People like the Unabomber, Ted Kaczynski. So John Powers was sent to USP Florence and locked in a cell for 15 years. I later met him at USP Tucson before it became a child molester prison. John Powers was released and came to population. While he was in population, an officer in the education department within a week of his arrival wanted to pat him down. So the officer was patting him down and John swung on him. That resulted in John going back to the hole. I was in the hole already under an investigation where I spent about a year there and I had met John in the shoe. John was on a cell alone, wreck alone. He wasn't allowed to go to wreck with anybody. He wasn't allowed to have a cell. They started thinking that his mental health was starting to go again because it had already went when he was in the ADX. So they started telling him that he could have someone come in a red cage with him, being that I'm from Rochester, New York, and John was from Syracuse. He asked for me to go to wreck with him. The cops told me, you're absolutely out of your mind to go in a red cage with this dude. I just laughed it off and went in the red cage with him. They thought that I was crazy for going in there with him to hang out with him for a reason because John had tattooed his whole body with a razor blade and an ink pen while in solitary confinement. But not only did he do that, but he bit his fingers off, bit his pinky fingers off, cut one of his testicles out, cut his earlobes, cut his Achilles tendons, just mutilated himself. Got to know John, and I'd ask John, why would you do stuff like that, John? What happened? He said he just started to lose his mind being in the ADX. And I had asked him about the ADX and how they lived, if it was really underground, and did they get to watch TV? He told me he had a TV for about three years, but then he could tell that the cops were watching him on his TV. So he picked up his TV and smashed it. He didn't want nothing to do with the TV. So needless to say, for the next 12 years, John didn't have a TV. He didn't have any human contact. And when I met him, his voice was just like, wow. When he talked to me, he would say things like, hey, Chad, you want to come to the rec yard with me? And that kind of voice. And I was just like, wow, what's up with this dude? But being that he hadn't had any human contact or talked to anybody in years, that's how he talked. And he had these crazy games. He made a ball out of a sock and he'd say, come on out and play wall ball with me, man. And I'd be like, all right, John, I'm going to come out and play wall ball with you. And I'd go out there and play wall ball with John. And I started to see that his mental health was starting to deteriorate more and more. After about two months, he told me he wasn't coming out of the cell for about a week. So I kind of asked him, like, what's up, man? Why, why not? He said, well, the cops are playing games with me. They're not giving me my medicine. You know, I take mental health medicine. They're not giving it to me. So I'm going to do something big. So I said, okay, John, you know, whatever you're going to do, go ahead and do it. But 
Try not to hurt yourself, you know? Try to stay focused, bro. You're going to be all right. They're going to let you out of the shoe. They know you've got some issues because you were in the ADX. So within a week, John had took a battery and turned it into a drill bit. And he was drilling his head. He kept drilling his head. And one day when the nurse was coming by to give out medicine, he had asked her for an aspirin. And when she came to the door, I heard her scream. Ah! John had cut a hole in his head and took a piece of his skull and put it on the food slot. And there was blood gushing from his head. The nurse was screaming. The warden came over, came to the prison. That night they flew John out of the prison with about eight cops, a single plane with just John on it. And they flew him to another prison to have his head operated on at that moment. And the crazy thing is they brought him back. When they brought him back, they had brought, pulled all his skin back over that hole on his head. And I seen him, it looked like he had a facelift. And I said, man, what the hell is going on with you? And he said, man, I had to release the pressure off my brain. I said, release the pressure off your brain? What do you mean, bro? What's going on? You could have died. You know, we're like, what's up, John? And he said, oh, man, I'm just trying to go upstairs. And I said, what do you mean go upstairs? He said, you know, man, go to heaven. I said, go to heaven? You're going to go to heaven by cutting a hole in your head, John? He said, dude, I'm the most dangerous federal prisoner in this whole system. I said, hold on, John, there's a lot of dangerous dudes, man. He said, I'm the most dangerous because they can't hurt me, Chad. I've lost everything I ever had. I don't care if I live. I don't care if I die. He said, who the hell you know has got the balls to bite their fingers off? He said, tonight I'm going to bite my other finger off. I said, well, if you bite your other finger off, you won't be able to play wall ball no more. He said, oh, you watch me. I can play wall ball. Long story short, next day, John bit his finger off. And then they transferred him to another prison on that same day. Again, a single flight. They flew him to a mental health ward in Minnesota. It was a prison in Minnesota that they took him to. Never seen John again. And I can tell you this. I've never seen a crazier federal prisoner than John Jack Powers. Solitary confinement has a way of destroying people mentally and emotionally. If you've never been in that type of environment, you can never understand it. The best way I can describe it is to tell you to go live in your bathroom at your house for three days. Just sit in your bathroom for three days. And that's what solitary confinement's like. Now imagine doing that for 15 years, even for a year. Only the strong survive and many fail.